Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. Well, I've been secretly writing some things for what probably is going to turn into a book about warfare and the fact that the war is won. And I've been having to live it in order to write it, as usual. So last week I was, uh, I got this wonderful revelation early morning because I'd asked the Lord, okay, everybody talks about warfare, pray warfare, but they don't tell you how to pray warfare. And I have to know that. I don't even know if I do it. So I want to know how specifically, clearly to pray warfare. Well, he gave me the entire answer, which I won't tell in this podcast. But when I get the book going out, I will tell it. It's incredible and available to everybody. It's right there in your Bible. But in the meantime, Carol and I, were, so the, to, that's to tell you that I'm on the subject of warfare and def, refining and defining exactly what the enemy does that is warfare. So I was at Carol's in, uh, w- one morning early and we were sharing in the scripture. Someone let Carol tell it. Well, it was, it was just an incredible morning. Before Martha ever got there, she had drawn my attention to Austin Sparks' um, open windows for October 7th. That was absolutely divine. And um, it was so aw- awesome because after I read it, God manifested and displayed it uh, in our midst. And it was basically um, about feeding on Christ in prayer. That was the first part. And the second part was feeding on Christ in fellowship. And it says fellowship. He said fellowship is a means of imparting Christ to the believer. And wherever spiritual fellowship is possible, you and I ought to seek, seek it, look after it and cherish it. That is his order, and there is something in ministering Christ to one another. There will be something lost unless that is so. These are ways in which we feed upon the Lord. And that just ignited in me, feeding on the Lord. And um, that morning that we met, when it was all over and I looked back, it was a feeding on the Lord. We had a banquet of him. But Martha came in, and she had had this wonderful revelation. But, of course, on the heels of that revelation, it was sorely attacked. And she was she was anxious. She was fretful. And I understand that very, very well. I believe that that is one of the agendas, one of Satan's weapons is always to distract us with some sort of anxiety, fret, whatever. And so as we were, as we were sitting there, we were, we were praying, we were talking. I said to her, you know, one of my life verses, it has become my life verse because I was riddled with anxiety and riddled with fear. And I said, this scripture, Martha, is just, is just so profound, and I have taken it, and I say this often. I wish I could do it by heart, but I say this often. I'm going to read it in the um, Amplified, but it's Second Timothy 1, seven. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. And as we started on that verse, as the Lord brought that verse that morning, it was it was illuminated like I've never seen it before because what we saw was the key was in the word has given. It says God has not given us a spirit of fear. So who did? Who does? Satan does. Always. That is what he he does. But the good news is the truth, the reality, 
that God wants us to live in, his reality is that God has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. And therefore, when that spirit of fear comes, I have the authority in Christ Jesus to say no. You didn't give me that, Lord. You gave me the spirit of power and love and a sound, disciplined, balanced, calm mind. And to take that, and we, we lived it. We took it. We took it. And we prayed, we proclaimed, and we rejoiced. And we had the victory because, oh, this is so exciting too, and I know we've, we've used this, we've talked about the scripture before, but Isaiah 41.10, this is so exciting. Fear not. There is nothing to fear. Why is there nothing to fear? For I am with you. Do not look around in terror and be dismayed. Why? For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. And that is what he did that morning. He held Martha up he, and retained her with his victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I knew where I was going to. You got me so excited. <laughs> but uh, so that was the first, first real clue that Satan has given us a spirit of fear, cringing, cowering, craving fear. And... Another word, I've often said, we call it anxiety, but it's really fear. And uh, <clears throat> I've had just been so attacked with that. But several days later, we were standing on Carol's porch. And one morning, I think I'd gone to pick up something she had made for me. And I said, how are you? She looked kind of distressed. And she said, I, I'm just so far from the Lord. I feel, I feel so far from the Lord. And I said, that's a lie. You are not. You're full of the Spirit. You're full of the glory. You're full of, full of Jesus. That's a lie. And she went, oh, and it was gone. Several days later, after I'd had this great breakthrough of revelation about how to pray warfare, and I had, within an hour, I was just ravaged with an attack from the enemy. And came back, and John and, and Jennifer were here, and they helped me get, get past it. But the next morning, I woke up in absolute despair. It was as dark as I have ever experienced, I think. It was, I couldn't seem to shake it. And, uh, but all of a sudden, I remembered what I had said to Carol, that it was a lie. That was all it was. Her, her distant, feeling of distance, and I know everybody listening that walks with the Lord has experienced that. I remembered how instantly it was gone when I told her it was a lie. And I went, I'm not depressed. I'm not in despair. That's a lie. In Jesus' name, you get out of here. And immediately, I was free and went on to have a very productive day. So we are seeing that the enemy comes with a lie. And I learned this many years ago when I, I understood that the devil will has to get your permission and your faith in his evil before he can work. Mm -hmm. And that often a picture would come to me and I would say, absolutely not, I destroy that plan. I would not receive that as fear. I would not let it go into fear. And I remember one time I had a, a kind of a picture of my, my uh, soccer playing son being hit in the stomach and injured. And I said, no, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. No, that is not going, that's the plan of the devil. I will not have it. And when I went to pick him up, he had been hit in the stomach, but was not injured. And so over and over again, have you ever seen your house on fire? Rebuke it. Have you ever seen it broken into? Rebuke it. Have you ever seen yourself falling down steps? That's one Satan pulls on me a lot. And I say, oh no, I destroy that in Jesus' name. Because he has to reveal himself. He has to tip his hand. And I have to give him a door. Exactly. By putting faith to it. Mm -hmm. Because yes. when you when you unite faith with his lie, then you have... Mm -hmm. So it's your fault, actually, and but, my fault. 
Yeah. It comes in. <laughs> but it's the power we have, you see. It's the power we have. Now, one thing that's essential before I get, get going in this is that you have to know the Bible. You have to know the gospel. You have to spend time in the New Testament, and it has to soak into you what he has said about what he has given. He has not, we got it, he has not given us a spirit of fear. That didn't come from him. He has given us a sound mind, power, and a well-balanced mind. And that's one of the things Carol and I were claiming that day, that as, as you grow older, one of the lies of the enemy is, oh, you're getting forgetful. Hmm. And I'm saying, I remember telling this to a woman when I was probably 35 years old, as if I knew anything at that point about <laughs> being 65 and, and having trouble. She kept saying, I, I can't remember, I can't remember. And I said, stop saying that. If you say it, it will be so. Stop saying it. Say, I have full cognizant, uh, cognizance of my mind. Defend it. I don't know if she did or not because I left town. <laughs> but anyway... I knew it then, and I've had to put it in practice now, that God has given me a sound mind, and we claimed it. And that's it's over, and that's done. Now, one thing I want to tell you about is I read in Art Katz's book, I believe it was The Prophetic Ministry. Just was reading an excerpt from it. And he told about a woman coming into his meeting, and she said, I'm in the Holy of Holies. He said, no, you're not. She said, yes, I am. The Bible says I'm in the Holy of Holies, and I am in the secret place, in the Holy. And he went, ooh. So he went home and prayed about it and thought about it, and he decided he was in the Holy of Holies too, and it changed his life. So I decided when I read that that I was in the Holy of Holies too. And it really does make a change, but you have to defend it, because boy, is that one attacked. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.